The shoulder is the most versatile articulating mechanism in the body. The typical adult shoulder sustains loads equal to the entire body weight for just routine everyday activities. However, the trained athlete can develop shoulder power adequate to bear loads greater than three to four times body weight. And yet, this amazing joint must also provide tremendous flexibility and retain pinpoint precision control. In this video, we will explore the anatomy and the mechanics of this important articulation. Using simple experiments, we will show some of the ways in which the muscles, tendons, ligaments, and joints of the shoulder complex work together to produce the unique combination of strength, stability, and range of motion. The shoulder is not a single joint, but rather an ensemble of four articulations that allow motion between the clavicle and the sternum, the sternoclavicular joint, between the scapular acromion and the clavicle, the acromioclavicular joint, between the humerus and the scapula, the glenohumeral joint, and finally between the scapula and the chest wall, the scapulothoracic joint. Normal shoulder motion depends on all four articulations. Even an action as simple as reaching overhead is surprisingly complex. Here we can see this action requires motion, not only between the humerus and the scapula, but also between the scapula and the chest wall. In this computer animation of live recorded motion data, we can see clearly the relative contributions of the glenohumeral and scapulothoracic articulations. The significance of these two joints can be emphasized by isolating the two components. Here is the movement that can be accomplished by the glenohumeral joint alone. And here is the motion that can be accomplished when movement is isolated to the scapulothoracic joint. Putting these two together, we have a range of motion much greater than that which can be accomplished with either alone. Let's go to the anatomy lab to explore the structures that are one, essential to shoulder stability, two, accommodate the extensive mobility, and three, provide power to the shoulder. From the front, we see the prominent subcutaneous clavicle with the attached muscles, serving to strut the shoulder away from the torso. It articulates with the scapula at the acromioclavicular joint on our left and courses towards the disarticulated sternoclavicular joint on our right. Viewing the shoulder from the back, we see the spine of the scapula from its medial vertebral border on our left to the posterior acromial process on our right. The powerful trapezius muscle spans the supraclavicular surface to insert along the scapular spine and clavicle, serving to suspend the shoulder dynamically and maintain its poise. Returning to the anterior view, we see the clavicular head of the pectoralis major muscle arising from the medial clavicle along with the sternal head which was detached from the chest wall, coursing laterally to insert into the humeral shaft. It is positioned ideally to bring the arm forward and across the body with great power. The posterior third of the deltoid muscle arises from the spine of the scapula. The lateral third from the acromion and the anterior third from the anterior acromion and lateral clavicle. This expansive muscle can not only elevate the arm to the front, side, and back, but also serve in arm rotation and sustain the extremity's position. The muscle converges on the deltoid tubercle of the humerus, making the deltoid shape that gives it its name.
We will now remove the deltoid, the coracoid muscles, and the clavicle to provide an excellent view of the coracochromial arch and the rotator cuff. The roof above the rotator cuff is formed anteriorly by the broad coracochromial ligament as it spans from the coracoid to the undersurface of the tongue-shaped scapular spine extension, the acromion. The rotator cuff muscles and tendons endure throughout life in an unyielding sandwich between the rigid coracochromial arch and the unforgiving rock-hard humeral head. One of the four rotator cuff muscles, the subscapularis, originates from the entire anterior concavity of the scapular body extending from the vertebral border to its insertion on the lesser tuberosity of the humerus. In concert with the other cuff muscles, contraction of the subscapularis not only pulls the head securely into the socket, but acting alone causes internal rotation of the humerus. Viewing the shoulder